Hello and welcome back to Microbial Concepts. Today's topic is questions on central dogma, right? So central dogma is very important in the field of say microbiology, biotechnology or a general biology as well. You should know this basic concept of what is central dogma. So central dogma is what DNA it replicates and by using a DNA template RNA is made by transcription, right? And using this RNA, protein is made by the process of translation, right? So this is the simple central dogma, uh, which we learn in say molecular biology. And there are various different, different uh, subtopics in central dogma, right? L like, um, protein folding and all then RNA, uh, RNA splicing, right? So these are some other topics, but today we are just going to focus on the basic of central dogma, questions on the basics of central dogma, okay? So if you are going for an interview, then you may get this question on what is central dogma, okay? So you should be able to just uh, note down or just say these three steps at least, okay? No one will assume uh, all the details, but at least you should know these basic three steps, okay? So let's start. So the first question is, which of the following best illustrates the central dogma of biology in terms of how a cell makes protein? Okay, so these are the options given. DNA to RNA to protein, then DNA to DNA to protein, then DNA to RNA to protein, the even the uh, processes are different here. Okay, the next is RNA by translation is made DNA. Then by using DNA by transcription, protein is made. So this is also wrong option. Then RNA to DNA to protein again here transcription and translation. So the correct option is which one? DNA to RNA to protein. So by transcription. RNA is made from DNA and by using RNA by the process of translation protein is made okay so that is our correct option then uh, a DNA for uh, if you need an ex explanation for this you can write it as DNA from the chromosome it first undergoes transcription to generate a mRNA and then this mRNA is used for protein um, synthesis okay by the process of translation where the mRNA has the genetic codes which are used for protein synthesis okay next is how will genetic information flow during gene expression okay how is the genetic information flow so the genetic information flow is again by the same way that is DNA to RNA to protein okay Next is many antibiotics they interfere with the transfer of genetic information from RNA to protein, right? We, uh, 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 I, I hope that you know how antibiotics they work. Each and every antibiotic uh, has a mode of action, okay? Say uh, a particular antibiotic has a mode of action of inhibiting cell wall. So other one can have a mode of action of inhibiting the protein synthesis, okay? So many antibiotics, they interfere the transfer of genetic information from RNA to protein. That, that means it will act somewhere between the steps of translation. Okay. And it will prevent the bacteria from growing. So the options are replication, transcription, transmission and translation. So you know that RNA to protein, the synthesis or the flow of genetic information from RNA to protein is via translation. Right? So the answer here is translation. RNA is used as code to create proteins and if antibiotic interferes with the ability of RNA itself to transfer the information to proteins, then translation is affected. Translation will not get completed and that particular protein will not form. And for proper functioning of a cell, proteins are also important. Okay, So the bacterial growth will also get hampered. Next is choose correct option regarding translation and transcription. So options are during transcription an mRNA molecule is created from the DNA molecule. Then 
translation takes place in nucleus while transcription takes place in cytoplasm. Next is during protein synthesis, translation occurs prior to transcription. No, then during translation, a DNA sequence is used to synthesize an amino acid sequence. This is also wrong option. Even option second, that is translation takes place in nucleus and transcription takes place in cytoplasm is also wrong. Actually, uh, it is vice versa. Translation takes place in cytoplasm and transcription takes place in nucleus. Okay, so the correct option is during transcription an mRNA molecule is created from DNA molecule. So transcription, it, uh, it is the process where a segment of DNA is copied into a complementary mRNA strand so that it can be translated into proteins. Next is which of the following best describes the role of enzyme helicase? Yeah, so in case of enzymes which are used in all these three processes that is replication, transcription and translation, you can get lot of questions on these enzymes. Now I have not included each and every enzyme here okay, in questions. So here I would like to point out this that you be prepared with the function of each and every enzyme in all these processes that is replication, transcription and translation. Okay, because these are some questions where students they get confused lot many times and they lose marks. Okay, so I don't want you to do that. You just be prepared for uh, some or do some extra work on these enzymes and do by heart their roles as well. So the role of um, helicase here. So unzip DNA strand by breaking the bond between the two strands, ligating broken strands back together, then repairing damaged DNA, separating double stranded RNA by breaking bonds and copying the DNA from replication. So the answer is unzip DNA strand by breaking the bonds between two strands okay so during um, replication you need to unzip the dna strands right and that is where helicase acts so helicase is an enzyme that breaks the bond between the coding and template strand of dna so that the other dna replication machinery can access the codes okay if both the strands are tightly bound to each other then it gets very difficult for the replication machinery to work okay so the helicase will unwind the dna strand or unzip the dna strands next is what is the enzyme used during transcription dna polymerase dna polymerase 2 rna polymerase 3 rna polymerase and dna polymerase 3 so answer is during transcription rna polymerase is used okay so transcription is where from dna RNA is made. So transcription begins when RNA polymerase binds to the promoter DNA sequence on a gene and this leads to the production of RNA chain okay, or synthesis of RNA starts complementary to the original or the template DNA strand. Okay. Then what is the size of prokaryotic ribosome and its subunit? This is also a basic basic question. So don't get confused okay so 50s plus 50s subunit 70s ribosome no then 30s 40s subunit 70s ribosome no then 50s 30s subunit 70s ribosome yes this is the correct answer here so you never you should uh, never add this 50 with 30 the answer will not come as 80s okay it is 50s larger subunit smaller subunit as 30s which turns out to be 70s ribosome for prokaryotes okay then the other two are also wrong options so the first uh, sorry so the answer here is 50s plus 30s subunit which gives 70s ribosome so prokaryotic ribosome consists of two unequally sized subunits large and small which form a complete ribosome unit next is if a dna strand has following sequence choose the answer 
that has correct mRNA sequence. Okay, so you will get these tricky questions sometimes. Okay, uh, not in your vivas or interviews, but uh, maybe some competitive exams you may get these kind of questions. So a strand, DNA strand or DNA segment is given, and choose the answer that has correct mRNA sequence. Okay. So the mRNA sequence will be complementary to this strand and other than thymine, you will have uracil. Okay, as it is mRNA, you should remember that there will be uracil present in mRNA. Okay, so the option here is this one, UAA, UCGUA. The U will bind to A if, if you if, if you want to find out the complementarity, then the U should bind to A, then A will bind to thymine. So thymine is present in DNA, so that that is uh, not issue here. Then U will again bind to A, and C will bind to G, and so on. Okay. So the mRNA will be complementary to the DNA sequence, but remember that mRNA has uracil base instead of thymine. If the base on left uh, left is the DNA, the corresponding mRNA code is UAA, UCG, UA. Okay. Next is filling the blanks question that is a dash mRNA is one that codes for multiple polypeptides. Okay. So, a single mRNA, it also it is possible that it can code for multiple polypeptides. Okay, so that particular uh, mRNA has a term and it is known as polycystronic. Okay, a polycystronic mRNA is one which can code for multiple polypeptides. Next is if a DNA coding strand has following sequence, which of the following is the sequence of the DNA template strand? Okay, so the coding strand is given and the template strand is asked here so that will run from 5 prime end to 3 prime end and it will have options from these two last two options why because the first base is adenine and adenine will pair with thymine okay so you should look for these two options so after adenine there is cytosine so cytosine will code uh, sorry it will pair with guanine again the thymine which will pair with adenine okay so the option is this fourth one t g a c a a t g okay from 5 prime to 3 prime end this will be the template strand for the given uh, dna strand okay so the dna template strand will be complementary to the dna coding strand and if the base on the left is coding dna uh, the corresponding template strand is this okay then another one is which of the following are purines right so as we are dealing with dna you should know which are purines and which are pyrimidines okay so cytosine only or adenine and guanine cytosine and guanine adenine only and guanine only Okay, so the purines are adenine and guanine and pyrimidines or pyrimidines are cytosine and thiamine. Okay, to help remember which bases are purines and which are pyrimidines, there are two acronyms, pure as gold. Okay, so adenine and guanine are purines because of their structure and also pyrimidines like pyramids are sharp. Okay, sharp things they cut. Okay, so from cut you can remember that cytosine, uracil, and thymine they are pyrimidines or they look uh, sorry pyrimidines. From that you can uh, remember an acronym like a pyramid. Pyramid has a sharp uh, tip and that can be used for remembering these uh, py uh, pyrimidines that is cytosine, uracil, and thymine. And purines are pure as gold. So, purines, A uh, is for adenine and G is for guanine, okay. The next is the enzyme that adds an amino acid to the tRNA molecule is called as. So, this is 
uh, question on enzyme for from translation okay the process where pro proteins are synthesized by using mrna so here amino acid trna synthesis is the enzyme which actually works or it functions as to add an M, add an amino acid to trna okay that is amino acyl or amino acyl trna synthetase okay then which statement is true regarding rna rna is single stranded molecule rna can be replicated rna contains adenine guanine cytosine thymine and adenine uh, sorry uh, rna is a protein so the first option is only correct here that is it is a single stranded molecule rna cannot be replicated rna they uh, or rna contains uracil other than thymine and rna is used to synthesize proteins okay so rna is not a protein then next is which of the following is not involved in the initiation of replication so ligase dna gyrase single stranded binding proteins and primase okay so the ligase is one which is uh, needed at the end of replication to and the function is to seal gaps or nicks between okazaki fragments okay so other three options which are dna gyrase single stranded binding proteins and primase they are required at the initiation of replication and ligase is required at the end okay and the last one is during elongation in translation which to which ribosomal site does an incoming charged trna molecule binds okay so there are three sites that is a site which is amino acyl trna binding site then polypeptidyl trna binding site and exit site okay so this is the site where the uh, incoming charged trna molecule will bind by p site the amino acid will be uh, amino acid will be added to the polypeptide and the leftover trna molecule will exit from the e site okay so the option here correct option here is a site a site is where the charged incoming trna molecule will bind okay so these were some questions related to central dogma in biology and uh, there are many more questions but i had limited to these 15 or 16 questions here okay so very important is you should know functions to each and every enzyme which is involved in say replication transcription and translation right and other subtopics which are important from uh, central dogma related topics are uh, protein folding then rna splicing and all what is intron what is extron uh, sorry what is intron what is exon and all so that is also very important and you should learn that be thorough in these concepts okay so thank you for watching this video and do like share and subscribe to my channel and i hope you like my videos and do share your valuable comments in comment box thank you